All right, our next assignment, assignment eight, is to put text with something that we've created originally, an original illustration, whether that's our graphic symbol from the Earth, our embattled Earth project, or whether it's our uh, spot illustration that we just finished. Text goes with images all the time in the commercial world. So this is for a children's book, and notice how the text needs to support the image, right? And kind of make sense with it, even though it's designed separately and then put together. Often this is done by a graphic designer, and the art is done by a digital artist. But as a digital artist, you really want to be able to control your text treatments as well, because they can make a lot of difference. So just for a simple spot illustration like this, without the text, this just doesn't make as much sense, right? So sometimes the text is contained by a banner. Sometimes it's almost a full illustration in and of itself. Here it has flowers and textures and different um, full spectrum color. And then here the text is just a, a white cutout, right? That floats with the image. And there's no right or wrong way. It just needs to support the art as well as possible. So the first thing I usually do before I um, try to figure out how text should go with my image is I'll look for some visual inspiration. And I've really been into letterpress, which is a kind of the earliest form of, of uh, mass produced printmaking, you know, from the 15th century. Gutenberg Bible kind of stuff. So letterpress posters for, let's say, music. Because <laughs> you'll see a lot of, of indie posters for bands, right? And we'll see images mixed with text. Now, the reason I like concert posters is because they often have a lot of text because there's a lot of information about where the venue is, what the time is, the different bands that are playing, right? And this is kind of the inspiration I wanted for my, uh, my rabbit and my bird, my little night hair image. So what I'm going to do is just start by making an inspirations file. So this is assignment eight. This can be color inspiration, but mostly it's basically how the poster format. These are all vertical posters. You know, how they're combining their text with an image, how it's wrapping around, how it's looking. We're looking for something fun. So this one's more straightforward, more image forward, on and on. Again, for inspiration, doesn't matter what the, um, ooh, I kind of like how that type works, that hand drawn type. Doesn't matter how high the resolution is. I'm looking at the, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the typefaces that are used just as inspiration, but also kind of how they're arranged with the image in the space. Because the way we're changing our spot illustration is we're taking it, like here's a spot illustration in the middle, right? And we're saying, okay, this is our picture plane. It's going to be a, a vertical poster. How can I make that look best with text around it? So it doesn't feel empty, but it feels supported, right? And I just like really, really straightforward examples, but I also really like kind of hand done type. So it's just whatever you like. I like how this has it integrated, the type is integrated into the illustration. Now, because these are all letterpress posters, they're basically silkscreen posters or run on a, um, a printing press, they're limited in color. So they have to be effective without like all the gimmicks of digital art and color holds and foil embossed inks, things like that. All right, and this is probably the one that's gonna inspire me the most, right? Because I like that we can do hand done type and we can curve it I don't know that I love it in a banner, but let's see. 
Okay, next what I'm going to do is what's called text blocking. So you see all these different examples, right? Of course, to understand what your text design should be, you need to understand what the, the type that you're going to use is, like what the words actually are. So I'm going to go back to assignment seven, and I'm actually just going to open up my um, Inkwork JPEG, the one that I submitted to Photobucket to show my vector line work. And I'm just going to open it up in Photoshop. It's just a JPEG, but this allows me to do what's called text blocking, sketch in how I think the type can look. So the first thing I need to do is I need to grow its canvas size, the paper around, and I'm going to make it 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. It's the largest a printing press piece of paper can be. And then I get to use the crop tool and kind of arrange my poster around that. Right, whether it's a standard size or not. So I'm thinking something like that for my poster size. All is one background layer. This is just going to be my text blocking sketch. Now on a new layer above, and with a pretty bold color, so I'll just use red, I'm just going to use the brush tool very simply. I'm going to use it at about a 70% opacity. I'm going to use it fairly sharp, maybe about an 80% hardness. And I'm going to think, OK, these are the words I want. I want absurdity, ampersand, and association. That's the text I've decided on. And now I have to think, how can those look good on this poster? Well, I don't think they look very good just like that, right? So. Let's see, in a bright color here, I'm thinking I want it kind of blocked like this around the image and then filling up the rectangle. So this is called blocking because I'm not actually writing the letters. Instead, I'm defining the space for the letters. So that's kind of a weird space. But now if I like that, look what I can do. If I think that overall shape will look pretty good on the poster, right? And I like that it has kind of an internal border then. Then I can start breaking it up in kind of a hand done way. So I can have the A here, the B here. And sometimes you actually just block it out, right? The S here the U, the R, the D, the I, the T, and it feels like I'm running out of room. So let me sacrifice a little bit. That's why you space it out ahead of time. I'm going to erase a little. I want to fit a, like a half letter more in there. And see how that readability works. Now this is doing hand done type. And I'm just sketching right now. But it can show me how it looks, how it spaces out. There are a lot of decisions you're making when you're setting type how much space goes between, how large the letters are. And honestly, it just gets easier with practice. You just kind of trust your eyes and your instincts. So the T is going to be the tough one. So I'm going to have the T overhang the Y, which will be out here. And then it will curl back like that. OK, and then I think, OK. Is that readable? Does that make sense? So that's one approach. That's text blocking. And then I might do uh, 
the next word under here, and that's a little trickier. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I do another big A. We can kind of carve it out of the space. Then I have the good old double S, which is really boring to draw. So it's good to vary it up. Imagine how how different this is than just using a typeface that's already designed where the S's are all identical, right? C's can be tough to get them to read right, so you have to give them enough space. And then I's kind of make up for it, they're really easy. And you can do a lowercase i if you want. A's always take up a little bit more room than they feel like they deserve just because they have to taper. But then a T next to the A makes that easier. So just like all the projects we've done, sketching will really help. And this is a type of sketching called text blocking. And it saves you so much worry and time later making sure you can fit everything in, right? It's basic silhouette and shape before you get to detail. Okay, so I like that. And then I need the ampersand. And so I'm thinking that could be a fun thing to put kind of in the middle that kind of connects the two, like a yin and yang kind of thing. You know, something like that. So, that might be my text blocking idea, and it can always change because what's great about digital art is all the versatility it has. Right. Okay, so I'm going to save that as something new because I want you to submit your text blocking sketch. Even if you end up using a typeface that someone else designed that you then modify, which I'm going to show you how to do, I want you to kind of sketch out beforehand the character you think you want it to have. If they're like, if it's bubbly and bright and like clouds, if it's really straight and like planks, all of that can really matter. So I'm just going to save it onto the desktop as assignment eight, and I'm going to call it my text blocking sketch. So that's step one. And of course, to do that, you need to know what words you want to use. I'm actually going to go ahead and save it just as a JPEG so I can bring that into Illustrator and then immediately uh, start tracing over those forms. Now I saw some hands up and I'm going to get around to that. You don't have to do it digitally though I think that makes a lot of sense, right? If you'll remember from my logo and I'm going to try to do text for both, that was assignment six I had already sketched some text blocking right here as part of the original design. So I don't want you to be afraid of hand done type because we're going to be able to make that look a whole lot cleaner. Right. So this one I'm, I'm locked into and I don't think I'm going to find any typeface that matches that. Right. I'm just going to have to make it myself. But this one, I might find a typeface that I can modify. So here's a site that you can go to. Now that you kind of know the character you want, you can get inspiration. This is a, a very commonly used free web resource called defont.com. It's on your assignment sheet. And all you have to do is kind of search for what you want. So if I want something that's kind of a letterpress design, I can search for letterpress typefaces. There's only three of them, right? But what's great about that is I can also put my type in here. So association and, oh, what did I say? Absurdity and association. 
And then as it shows me all the different typefaces that I can download for free, it will.